Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Hi, my name is Michaela Sheldon and I channel a variety of multidimensional beings including the Council of Light, the Pleiadians and many many more. What was uh, what was growing up like? What was there was there anything that resembled this gift as as it is now? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I grew up in a very conventional household in a very middle class neighborhood here in Detroit. Um, all of the families work for the big three. So this is automotive country, um, Catholic, Italian family. And um, I had a pretty normal childhood, you know, brother, sister, I was the oldest of the three. And I did a lot of babysitting for my younger siblings. Um, looking back now, I remember having conversations with many, um, I'd say angelics and beings as a young child. However, I did not rec recognize that at the time. Well, was there anybody else in the family, prior generations, that was talked about with ever having any gift? Never, no. Now that I have come out with this gift, I keep getting little inklings from people that perhaps they also had similar types of conversations from ants, for example. Um, but no, no, growing up as a child and even today, my family still is not 100% uh, on board <laughs> with what I do. Um, I think they want to try to understand it, but it's not a conversation that they're used to having. I, it's funny, I, when we first met, I was mm. saying to you my experience of, of this issue, yeah. where what's been coming to me with the channelers that I've met is that actually they're in your life, these family members. They would not be there if they didn't resonate on some part of your journey. Right. Well, I totally believe that because I think before we come, we make contracts with all of these people. <clears throat> Excuse me. We make contracts with all of these people. Um, our parents, our children, our immediate family, and those contracts are usually based around some type of an awakening, right? To not just spirit, but all aspects of life, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, right, spiritual. So when I um, encounter this in readings, for example, because I have so many people who come to me who say, um, my family doesn't get me, I, I can't have this conversation with them. Um, what the guides will come in and say is that the best thing you can do is live in that truth because the contract you made with them was for them to see you living in that truth and that was to give them the opportunity to also choose to be a part of that reality so no mistake no mistake oh well that makes so much sense doesn't it yeah that makes so much sense does that make it any <clears throat> easier for you though hmm you know that's the dilemma that we're in right now and i think that's a big part of this transition that we're walking on the planet is is it's not easy you know and, and spiritual awakening usually comes with difficult aspects of transitions that we have to walk and 
You know, I think to some degree, the reason it's not so easy is we're not used to living in our truth. You know, we've grown up in a society where we've been taught that we have to be something we are not. So stepping into who we are is such a huge, fearful thing for so many people. And I think that's what makes it so difficult. You know, and that was my experience too. Um, having to come out to my family members that I was a channel in the world was one of the most terrifying things that I faced in this transition. But, but what's funny about that is it was so false. You know, because the more I did live in that truth, the happier I was, um, right? The more um, connections I made to people, experiences. So it's critical, you know? Well, how, how does it feel then not to be recognized for your work in the family? Yeah, it's kind of funny um, because I, what's happened to me was I, I manifested an alternate family. So I have this organization around me of people who encourage me and are excited about my gifts and then yeah to go back to family dinners and things and they don't have any idea about what i do it is you know it is hard and um you know the way i i, I guess i frame it is that in every experience as our soul walks that journey we're becoming more you know and, and i think in some ways i chose a family that was not going to understand what i was here to do because on the flip side of that I'm working with people that are having the same experience. And so I think it's so critical that we also have an understanding of what we're here to, to teach or share. And I see that so much as well. So I'm, I guess I'm coming to peace with that. The more I understand it's a critical part of my soul journey to do the work that I'm here to do. Yeah, that's the paradox as well. Isn't it? I'm here to do the work I'm here to do. But let me just keep <clears throat> just, just tucking here a little bit. So, so, so when I said, what's it feel like not to be recognized? It's been people not to ask how your work, what, what's how your day's mm -hmm. been, or not want to talk about your work. And on top of that, uh, to to just talk about such surface level stuff to yourself when really you want a deeper conversation sometimes. Well, you know, what's interesting is I found some interesting conversations are beginning to weave into those family dinners. <laughs> I mean, if I don't force it, the more I show up as myself, the more the conversation starts to evolve. And um, that's what's happened over the last three, four years with my own family, is that they're starting to talk about things like cryptocurrencies and conspiracies and things like this. And, and I always am kind of in shock <laughs> when that happens because, well, we forget, you know, we have an energetic effect. Um, but, you know, yes, it does. Does it does it feel good that no one asks me how my career is going, quote unquote, in the 3D or right, my mission, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, it, it, it isn't fun for me. But what I found is I've manifested other people that have taken on that role. So it all washes in the end, you know, even as a young child, I didn't fit in. So I was always that kid that was off in the corner reading a book while everyone else was playing the game together. And I wasn't often invited to the birthday parties and things like that. I was a very um, a quiet child. I was an introvert. And I did always have conversations going on in my head, right? Same thing today. I mean, we find ourselves in the midst of a huge transition right now. And I think what we're noticing is the difference in vibration or the difference in frequency between who we're becoming and who we're surrounded by. And that is the stark contrast. So I think in order to really um, move to the other side, I mean, we're not, and I talk, I guess just to back up, I talk a lot in my channeling or the guides talk a lot in my channeling about splitting of timelines. Right, which is a huge issue. That's what's happening right now. We have some people that are very grounded in a third dimensional material reality and others that are transitioning beyond into a more multi-dimensional or fifth dimensional and beyond reality. And um, many of these people that we find we can't have these conversations with, they came here to the planet in this time to also be a part of this transition. So to some degree, I think it's important that they're still here and that they surround us. And the goal becomes, how do I intermix with these, these people without lowering my frequency? And I think that's the subtle, I guess, consciousness you have to bring 
to these conversations in order to feel empowered about who you are because I don't make any mistakes for who I am. You know, at family dinner, if someone asks me how my day was, I'm gonna talk about what I do, right? And um, that takes a different stance than going back into those family dinners and, and making apologies, right, for who you are. And I think that's the energy we're really working through right now is uh, owning that truth and showing up in that vibration. Normal school years, normal growing up? Yeah, you know, I was that A-type kid. I got all A's. I was on student council. I was a dancer. I was in my high school musicals. Um, went to college, got a degree, um, just as I was expected to do. Yeah, I went to catechism, Catholic school every Tuesday, you know, after school was over on the bus. I lived a very normal, normal life. Were the voices always there? Were the voices always there? What, what were the voices in a sense? Was it your voice, but wiser? Yes, no question. You know, and I, I didn't really um, recognize this until I fully started to channel, like probably, you know, seven, eight years ago. I always had this banter, this communication going on with something outside of me where I was having a conversation. And I kind of remember as a young child, almost um, speaking with humans that were past, you know, like historical people and things like that, like old presidents and um, um, people from history books that I would communicate with. But I guess at the time, I really just thought I had a, a, an overactive imagination, you know? And um, one morning I was, this is later in life, I was wiping down the counters, just preparing a meal. And I was having this two-way banter, just like it was a part of my regular activity. And I paused and it just became overwhelmed because I thought I'd been doing this my whole life, even as a child, and didn't recognize what it was, you know? And I just didn't have the people around me to talk to about that. And what did the voice sound like? It sounded like me, it, it, you know? it it. Um, it's more of a telepathic thing for me. I do hear voices in specific tones, almost like you know, human or, or interdimensional at times. But for me, it's mostly telepathic, meaning that it's just an energy exchange. And I'm interpreting answers and, and responding to those answers. What about music in your head? Yeah. I've always had that thing going on with music in my head, waking up with a specific song, right? Or hearing the song throughout the day. I, I believe I've gotten so many messages through song. No question, yeah. So if one is watching this, <laughs> very English way of saying it, if someone's watching this and they were like, well, I don't get my own voice too often, but I'm always bloody hearing a, a mu music, maybe a music of a film that I like, or maybe whatever music may, it may be. Is that, is that wh wh why is your higher self trying to give you that, that, that music then? Well, I think that we pick up on information in a lot of different ways. So some of us who are more drawn to music, that's just the mode of transportation that works with our structure. So some of us gravitate towards um, more visual signs, like the repeating numbers or even seeing, you know, signs from guides. But, but I believe that our higher self and our team, because we have so many guides, teachers, masters, beings around us, communicate with us in the way that is most appropriate to get our attention. So if you're someone who's drawn to music, you're going you're gonna to hear music as the message. So when you see so some people, that you just said that it's the numbers, isn't it? People see mm. the same numbers occurring again and again. They may be visiting someone for the first time, someone that um, they've just known, yeah. and then it happens to be those numbers that are in the person's mm. house address, phone number for that person, those right. particular numbers show up. The num What is that thing with numbers sometimes? Well, what I've learned is that we are sacred geometry. So our energetic structure is made up of repeating patterns. And beings that are human love repeating patterns because that's how we connect to all things. So a lot of us want to break that down and we want to know the meaning. Okay, I've, I see 11, 11, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, all of these things. What does this mean? What the guides will often say is you're seeing a pattern 
as you are raising your consciousness to alert you to something that you are either thinking or feeling in the moment. So it's really important when you see those repeating patterns to think about the repeating patterns you have going on in the mind or in your life. Because typically when you see those patterns, you are, you're making a leap in consciousness. In that moment, there's an opportunity for you to observe something about your thought process in response to how you've changed or who you're becoming. So if you always take those opportunities to stop and think about what you're, uh, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what patterns are existing right now that you're trying to change, you're gonna always see the message in those numbers. But how do you interpret what that message might be though? Um... Well, you know, sometimes we're not meant to be given all of the answers. And um, I, you know, I take a different approach on this than a lot of other channels because I don't think our guides, our higher self is here to um, tell us the way. I think they're here to give us opportunities for us to choose the way because we have free will. When did the change start to happen? Hmm. Well, let's see. It was probably started for me around 2008, 2009. So I had um, quit my job. I was a stay-at-home mom and was living this beautiful life, volunteer world, you know, large and in charge. And um, after the birth of my second daughter, I started to have some pain. And this pain really took over my life. So I had this pain in my hip, my back, my leg, and I was going to regular Western doctors, you know, treatments, prescriptions, x-rays, MRIs, the whole bit every year, getting worse and worse. And it had been about five years to the point where this pain had consumed me. I had stopped driving because I was nervous. I had numbness in my legs. I was afraid I was going to crash the car and, and hurt my kids. Um, I had started to have my nerves severed, my nerves ablated every six months because the pain was so intense. And um, I didn't have any answers. But um, I ended up making a move in 2009. So my husband at the time had um, decided that he was going to take a job across town and that we needed to make this move. And I was really not in favor. I was digging my heels in. I was in this really beautiful neighborhood and I was, I was kind of taken care of there, you know? I had all these families around me that would pick up my kids if I was having a rough day, pick up groceries for me. And you know, I think the universe has to throw us into uncomfortable situations for us to choose to change. And um, made the move, found myself across town in a neighborhood that I was very alone, couldn't make any friends to save my life, couldn't make my old life work, and my pain became very exasperated. But in this new area, I began to become exposed to Eastern philosophy, which was something I'd never considered before. And um, I came across meditation. And I thought at that time, you know, I was 40 years old, chronic pain, sitting in these pain management clinics with people who were double my age on the way out. And I thought, you know, this meditation gig is <laughs> worth the try. Uh, so I taught myself meditation and I started to do it very religiously just to control pain. I had no spiritual purpose in my life whatsoever, but I thought, you know, this is going to help me. And um, I started having some really crazy experiences, you know, right off the bat, I fell into meditation very quickly, um, started going very deep into trance and started to hear things in very loud voices. And um, the messages were coming in uh, just a sentence at a time at first. And um, I, I really was kind of pushing that under the covers because I didn't want to deal with it, didn't know what it was. But um, something that really got my attention was as I was walking around outside of my meditations, I was still hearing these voices. And when I was having casual conversations with people, I was picking up on information from them that they weren't saying out loud. And I had to start to question this a little bit, <laughs> which I did, and um, began to realize that there was something bigger than me that was happening. 
when was uh okay so uh, you you weren't discussing this with family members no no as a matter of fact i was doing it in my closet i ended up getting some books just to understand basic things like clear audience what is clear audience and I began writing in a journal. That was one of the things that I um, found in the book was recommended, that was that I should write. So, so I would meditate and I would, I would bring in a sentence and I would write the sentence down. And, and I just noticed some little strange things. Like I, uh, I would write things down in ways that I wouldn't necessarily talk um, or I'd be talking about things that I didn't necessarily know about, um, words that I wouldn't necessarily use. And then, of course, you know, I'm practicing this daily, three times a day, going deeper and deeper in a trance. Now, the one sentence is three, it's six, it's 12. I'm coming through and I can't write it down anymore. So one day I decided to press record on my iPhone. And, and my thought process was, I will speak into the phone what I hear in my mind. And uh, that forever changed my life because when I listened back, I heard my voice change. Um, I heard um, a lot of information about things that I wouldn't, you know, normally know about. And uh, if there was a female guide that was there, my voice would get very high. If there was a male guide there, my voice would get very low. I was taking on the characteristics of these beings. Um, so I had to come to terms with the fact that something was going on. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, um when did you start to take this to the next level? And what was the next level? Well, um, for me, I had this huge awakening in 2010. And um, it was Christmas morning, and I was making a dinner for my family. Everyone came to my family, me and my house for dinner, because I was the oldest, you know, I still am, the oldest of three kids. And uh, I was making this recipe that I usually make at Christmas and there were some very special ingredients that I needed that I don't normally have in the house. So I got up that morning ready to make this recipe and went to the pantry and discovered I had forgotten to purchase three very key ingredients for this recipe. There was a beef stock, a red wine, and a spice that I needed. And I um, thought, no big deal. I'll mock it up. Got on a stool, started pushing stuff around. I remember just going through the pantry with vigor and there was nothing similar that I could use that day. And I even called the local gas station because all the grocery stores are closed. So I thought, oh, maybe the gas station, right? Well, of course, they didn't have anything on their shelf. And so my practice at that time was stress equaled pain. Pain equals straight to meditation because I was trying to control pain. And so I told the girls, you know, I need a few minutes. I went into my bedroom and shut the door, went into a very deep meditation that day. And I heard in a very deep male voice three words. And those words were, I am Jacob. And it shook me, it was so loud, almost if there was a being in the room with me. So I opened my eyes and looked around and I tried to communicate back with Jacob, but I didn't get anywhere that day. But I had this beautiful, blissful, loving energy that was unmistakable. And I felt completely at peace and at ease and thought this is ridiculous. I don't know who that was, but I can salt and pepper this thing, this is Christmas. And I went out into the kitchen, opened the pantry door, and there on a shelf in a neat row, right at eye level, in sealed containers, were the three ingredients that I needed for the recipe. So I wasn't sure what that was about. I thought, wow, I manifested something into my physical reality, right? Or Jacob was just trying to prove to me that he was there. But um, that one event just shook me into trying to better understand because I guess I would say I was a passive receiver <laughs> of information, but that one event wanted, um, I wanted to question. It made me want to know, who's Jacob? Who are these beings? What is happening to me? Why is this going on? And I just, whew, I took off. Um, now I was still doing this in my closet, but what, what ended up happening to me was the messages got bigger than me. <laughs> um, and I'll say, first of all, I didn't believe in extraterrestrials at all until I started channeling them around that time. Jacob ended up being a gatekeeper for me, a guide for me that gave me a lot of answers, um, took me through the process of understanding what this transition I was going through was all about, which was remembering why I came here to the planet and being a channel in the world. 
he showed me and told me that I was here to offer channeled messages to light workers on the planet who are going through a difficult transition. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't want anything to do with it. I was actually kind of mad <laughs> because it wasn't, you know, my idea of success in the 3D, um, you know, nor was it what I was comfortable with. But um, I'll tell you the real defining moment for me. I had um, so many synchronistic things happen during that time. I fell into this organization called Flower of Life, which is uh, a group focused on evolving human consciousness. And we had an activist movement. So in my awakening, I had become pretty angry about things like GMO food and fluoride in the water and chemtrail and all these things that we know are not good for us. And so this activist movement was kind of like an outlet for me to, to fight some of these things going on. Well, we had come up against a roadblock, you know, because these are big issues. And I said, you know, I think I'm just going to channel on this. I'm going to talk to my guides and see what they tell me. And what I brought through that day was just, um, I sat on it for a couple of weeks. It was so big. And what I was told was um, that we have a reptilian consciousness here on this planet. And until humanity understood vibration and energy and how their consciousness was affected by these beings, we would never be able to resolve many of these issues. And for me, that was such a responsibility. You know, I, I sat on it for quite a while. I didn't tell anybody. But I think as I began to let the cat out of the bag and bring some of these messages to the surface, it was my journey from who am I to, to who am I not to bring this stuff through. Okay, so so at that point then, when did the relationship with your former husband start to dissolve? Well, it had already it had it already started to dissolve because we were operating on different frequencies. He's a wonderful man. He, he's a corporate CFO. You know, he's very successful in the 3D. But as I started to um, connect more and change and shift my vibration to a higher frequency, we just were not communicating on the same wavelength anymore. And, um, you know, I think to a degree, our contract had been fulfilled. We brought two beautiful children into the world. And, um, you know, that, that process ended up transitioning. And, um, you know, it was a good thing for both of us. But he couldn't have, I don't want to say this the wrong way. I don't think that he was the soul that could have taken this journey with me. I think he was the soul that got me to this journey, and I'm very appreciative of that fact. But um, from the point where I began to realize this was going to be my work in the world, from that point forward, I think that um, I was meant to travel with other souls. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Uh, so, so Jacob is no longer with you? You know, he comes in very rarely. So he did leave. Um, I should leave. But he, he came in and he, he told me one day, he said, you know, my work with you is done. And I was shocked because I was so close with him and he was such a special guide to me that I thought he'd always be there. But as he came in and he made that announcement, I had already started to connect with so many different guides and beings and collectives. So as he stepped out, he was replaced by other, other beings and guides. Yeah. Okay. And, and why the change of name as well, if, if, you wanted, if you're comfortable talking about that? My change to Michaela Sheldon? Mm. Well, it was an interesting time in my life because I was not only channeling, but I was also exploring a variety of new alternative topics for me, like astrology and numerology, energy and vibration. And I just found that my old name vibrationally did not fit the path that I was taking. And so the Michaela name, you know, what's interesting about this is I wasn't comfortable channeling, but I kind of knew, you know, I was at the point where the divorce and I needed to change my name. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm becoming such a different person. And I had completely healed my pain at this point. So I, I felt almost like a completely different person. But I felt like I needed a, a, a name to vibrationally fit the journey that I was on. So Michaela Sheldon is a, is a vibrationally balanced name 
that more appropriately fits my path. And what, what did all friends think about that change? Oh, they thought I was nuts. <laughs> yeah, they thought I was nuts. I mean, you know, my family, everybody. Um, you know, look, here I am channeling extraterrestrials, changing my name, going on this journey. Um, at that point, it was just a small fraction <laughs> of what I had um, to announce to my family and friends, you know. But you always find that when when you're giving these messages, the the the, the work is so fulfilling and it's so um, helpful to others, though. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. I could not, I mean, express how fulfilled I am through this connection, and to be able to share that with other people, it's um, it's just been a blessing. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, and. So, so would you class yourself as a multi-dimensional channeler? I am. I, I am a very open channel, and, and I found that very early on. Um, I ended up taking a class in channeling after I was full-on channeling just because I felt like I needed to understand what I was doing. And um, I found that a lot of the channels in the class had one specific group or collective or being that they were working with. And um, I always was very open to allowing a variety of beings to step in. And what I learned in this class was how to direct that. And that was interesting for me because, like I said, I, I, I've kind of taken this journey from the more passive, just allowing to the more um, active um, directing the energy. And um, yes, I'm a very open channel. What, what is channeling to you? Channeling to me is really just communicating telepathically within a variety of dimensional realities that exist in this space. And I feel like we're all channels. You know, we all have this unique ability to tap in in our own unique way. I think that's the key because um, a lot of the messages that I bring in, they focus around that uniqueness. And a lot of people want to learn channeling. They want to, you know, learn how to channel. and. I've, I've taken kind of a backseat to this because I feel like the best mode of understanding your own unique technology is to explore it yourself because I can't possibly know where your sensitivities are and, and how you connect, but, but it's really just having a communication with the universe. That it makes you think then, what is this reality really? This is the reality that we are in right now as humans is a very limited reality. And it's been stifled for us through so many different things, right? I mean, this reptilian consciousness that has come into um, much of my work, you know, I don't want to put the, the blame on a specific race. I think that um, the reptilians are a beautiful race and there are many benevolent reptilians that are assisting humanity. But um, over time, there have been a variety of roadblocks that have been created here that hold us back from the access that we have to universal information. So we exist in a very limited dimensional reality as humans. Could you change that name? Well, we, we, you should go with what what's right, feels right for you to use, but could is that name interchangeable for um, lower vibrational beings? Yes, I think that it could be. And I think we have many lower vibrational beings here. But I also believe that um, we have a significant influence here on our planet um, that is reptilian and there is a historic event that was the chain reaction for this and it affects our DNA as humans. Well, most definitely, mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah. Um, well, that's a different message to others. When, when you're talking about connecting with the light beings, mm -hmm. how, how, how high is their vibration? I do. I do work with a variety of different beings and collective forms of consciousness. The highest being this Council of Light, which is a 12th dimensional collective council. They oversee the grids, which I uh, interpret as the Akashic records, the grids, the information of the entire universe, all things. Um, but I also connect with a variety of different beings, master teachers in different dimensions because I also connect with the Pleiadian Collective and they are ninth dimensional, Arcturians, eighth dimensional. 
So what comes through is what's needed at the time. They they will whoever's going to come through will choose who they get, who's going to come through, or do you call or do you do, can people ask what they they would like to connect with? You know, when I do my live sessions, um, as questions are coming in, the most appropriate beings or collectives to answer those questions will come forward. However, I can request. So um, oftentimes during my live sessions, someone might request Mary Magdalene to uh, answer a question and, and I can pull that energy forward. I always give um, a general message. So in my live sessions, it's almost like a continuum of messages that are building on each other about what's happening on the planet and what the current energies are. And those beings and guides come in and out as well, but typically those messages are coming from the council. Okay, that's interesting. We'll get into. We'll, we'll speak to the council, maybe whoever's going to, whoever we choose to bring, or whoever's going to come through in, in just a bit. Um, where would you like? Where would you? See, what is the future of channeling to you? What, what What is the future of this phenomena? Well, I think that we can already see it here on the planet. Everybody is starting to tap in to communication. I mean, ultimately, we talk a lot about disclosure happening on our planet and, and what the guides have been saying is disclosure is happening within. I mean, exactly what happened to me in my path and my journey is happening to almost everyone across the globe. We are now tuning in and the veil is very thin between our inner technology and this outer universe. It's just that we're all sensing it a bit differently. So how do I think that's going to evolve? I think that we have a variety of channels on the planet right now that are way showers for how our own inner technology is going to begin to telepathically exchange and communicate here on the planet. That's such a good way of putting it because yeah, we, we you know we're also obsessed, aren't we, some people about the dis, you know disclosure that there's life out there. Right. What about the disclosure of what this reality is? Right. Well, our consciousness is driving disclosure. So it's what's happening inside, it's our own messages and the way that we receive. But um, some of the other things I've brought in uh, are that uh, everything that's missing from this planet that we need to have proof of, you know, ancient tablets or, um, you know, information that might be missing from government documents, that all exists somewhere. It exists in a multidimensional reality. And as our consciousness shifts, we have more access to that information in those multidimensional realities so that when these ancient tablets show up or missing, missing government information or the whistleblower shows up, it's, it's not because we forced that issue, it's because our consciousness matched now the information. And the multidimensional realities, are they affecting this reality? Do you Always, think? yes. Does, does our reality affect other multidimensional realities? Yes. When we channel, we're not saying to those beings that we channel, oh, hang on a minute, can you just take a seat for a second where you're at? Can you sit down and we're going to channel you now? We don't, I don't know what you was doing just then. You might have just <laughs> been doing the washing up, but can you just take a break for a second? <laughs> yeah. It, it's not happening like that, is it? No, it's real time. So, so we perceive time here as linear, but really time as a universal construct is all happening in this present moment. Why are you not channeled? Why is nothing channeling you? Well, I believe that beings are channeling me, but it's a different process because, you know, we believe, I think, that all of these multidimensional beings have it down. They understand it all. They've got all the wisdom. But, you know, that's not necessarily true. They're going through their own transitions, their own evolution, and they learn just as much from us as we learn from them. So right now we could be being channeled by something else, but it would be out of this space time of our understanding now. It would be our consciousness that's being channeled, much like we channel their consciousness. I think that they have access to information a bit differently than we do. You know, we have channels that are here that are grounded in physical form. I believe that in some ways humans have to be conduits here on the planet for this information. but. You know, the energy, the frequencies that they vibrate in, they can pick and choose through or sift through dimensional information differently than what we can. So, um, you know, I often will do sessions with people who believe that they're traveling between dimensions or have been taken on ships and things. 
And a lot of them have made contracts to be conduits for sharing information with other dimensional beings and collectives. Isn't maybe being taken onto a ship maybe not what we think it is? Maybe that's a, a sign of dimensional traveling, maybe? Well, I think our consciousness defines and interprets things through our limited perception. You know, and I'll give you an example of this. I have traveled to visit the Council of Light. And when I did, I ended up at this table. It was almost like a, a wooden table with all of these beings. Some of them very tall, some of them looking more human, some of them not human. And as I arrived there in lucid state, I knocked on this wooden table and I said, why the table? Why would there be a table in a 12 dimensional reality? And they said, you put that here because this is how your consciousness perceives a council sitting at a wooden table. So they actually made the table disappear and we ended up collaborating in a union of oneness and I got to feel what that was. So even channels, I mean, my consciousness is perceiving and interpreting the information such that it can be understood by humanity. With other channels, where where does mm, what's the right word here? Being picky with 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 whose information that you resonate with, are you quite picky with other channelers? I don't listen to other channelers, to be honest, and and the reason for that is, it's hard for me um, to listen to other people's information and then think that it's not somewhere in here that I'm going to regurgitate it back, and I take this position that I'm in very seriously. Um, so I don't listen to information of other channels. What I will say is sometimes my guides will lead me to information from other channels that resonates with something that I've already done. And um, often that's a confirmation for me. I've met a lot of couples doing this work. Mm -hmm. uh, your partner, he's in the consciousness field as well. Yes. Uh, he also channels, not as publicly. Uh -huh. Do you find there's any competition between you both with two people, if one's doing better than the other? You know, we're all human. So, of course, at times we're going to resort back to those 3D imprints <laughs> and things. But what I've found is, um, as he and I have evolved together in this work, the vibration typically will carry us beyond. And so when we have those feelings come up, they're very easily um, recognized and talked about and transmuted. So it's almost like um, operating outside of yourself as a um, observer at times. That's what I'm feeling more. And you know, I think that a lot of the couples that are coming together now that are doing this work are coming together because it's required for the next phase of what we're walking into. It's almost like we're attracting um, the people that are here to help us with our mission. So we have this complementary male-female or, you know, whatever it may be, energy coming together. The imprints are suited to work together to amplify the work of each other. And um, so it's not as if that, um, you know, competition, as you put it, is, is coming up in a way that's destructive. But it's coming up and it's interesting to watch and then work with and use differently, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Just just for those who may question that, that's all. Whether that question even gets into the documentary or not right now. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you might want to put in that you might want to add? So the one thing I want to add is that I did heal myself 100% of chronic pain. And um, I believe that the reason that happened was not because I was told the answer, which we often expect as humans, but, but because I had this connection and I was shifting my vibration in such a way that I was aligning with new information and timelines were opening up for me to walk to actually heal myself. I did so many things during that time. It was about a year and a half transition for me, but I found myself on the other side of it in better health than I was in my 30s. Do you think you're in the same timeline as you initially ended, entered this work into? No. <laughs> no. And I feel that dramatically. There's no way. Yeah, new timeline. Do, do you see, can you sense the differences maybe? 
I do sense the differences and it's it's very subtle. You know, it's very subtle, but yet profound at the same time. Do, do you feel that you woke up one morning and it wasn't your body that shifted, but your consciousness the consciousness shifted to another reality? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I see this all over the place. I mean, our consciousness is moving so fast. Our vibration is moving so fast. We're jumping timelines in a day. Why are you still jumping to timelines where there's still these major issues in the world? Well, I think because those timelines have to be addressed with the new consciousness. You know, we, we are going to experience history again until we walk through it and make different decisions. So to a degree, everything that we experience as a soul or as a collective, we're experiencing from the past with a new consciousness so that we shift it. So in a sense, even just forget past and future lives, just this timeline right now, there's maybe a, a, an unfathomable amount of versions of us in the same setting, but just some t differences. Everyone's different. Everything's a unique flavor. Everything's yeah. different out there. There's t an unfathomable number of versions in this present time out there. Absolutely. And that could go for every single past and future life. Well, our soul is fragmented into light, light consciousness, and it ends up integrating with a variety of different forms of beings and in timelines, right? It's, it's infinite. Do you think it's possible that, okay, so we just this particular timeline, like this life right now. So you, you, you live this life from A to yeah. B with the progression that you've made. And then when you go back home, whatever that means, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a word. Right. And you go into the non-time duality space, and you say, you know what, I want to go back to a life where I lived in 1896, and I'm going to take what I've learned now, not consciously, but subconsciously into that life, improve that life again by reliving it again in a different way, which will just maybe shift where I am in this life. I believe that that's true, and I, I would even take it a step further because I think that when we transition, when we are operating in that collective form of consciousness, it isn't just a decision for us, but it's a decision for everything and everybody. It's looking at our lives and saying, okay, the decisions that I made in that life didn't just affect me and the other people that were immediately in my peer group, my family group, but how did it affect the planet? How did it affect the human consciousness? How did it affect the Pleiades, you know? And wanting to come back and make those decisions again such that they are collectively aligned. So you could say then that really, um, but just forget change of the world, just change yourself, work on yourself in a, in a sense of healing yourself in this lifetime. And it's, it, it really is a ripple effect to everything else. No question, no question. We are all connected. And everything that we do vibrationally has an effect on something or somebody else. Strange, isn't it, that throughout this document, the one document documentary, the one thing that's been coming out, we're not even channeled yet, we're just about to finish yeah. this now, the one thing that's been coming out is, is the multidimensional aspect. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why does that keep coming out? What is that, that's, why is that side so prevalent? Because it's time. You know, we've, we've forgotten that we are ambassadors of the universe. It's not just about what's happening on this planet, although I believe that we're walking into a time when what is happening on this planet has to be the major focus because it does affect everything and everyone else. And, and the Council of Light that I work with, one of their main intentions or assignments is to monitor the way that planetary energies connect and races connect. So. For example, if they see that the human consciousness crea is creating something, something that is going to have a negative effect somewhere else in the universe, they might go in and, and vibrationally shift that or try to amplify the consciousness of the human race such that it doesn't affect other areas of the, of the universe. And, and we've forgotten this. And, and what do they think, and this, um, this is the final question, what do they think about present moment and, think, and working on that? Well, what the council would say is that everything that you're doing in this present moment, everything that you are, everything you believe you are, every thought, every emotion, right, everything you create has an effect somewhere else in the universe. But it starts with humanity because humanity makes up a vibration, a frequency. 
and that frequency is exchanged. That information is exchanged through a grid, and that grid connects all beings, all races, all planets. So to look at your life as that important can really be uh, the shift, <laughs> you know, that you need to make different changes in your life that don't need, you know, it, don't, it doesn't just um, affect your happiness, your fulfillment, but, but it expands the consciousness of humanity such that everyone else benefits from that. Is that because that we are all one? Absolutely. We are all one. Yeah. And what we do to another, we do to ourselves. What we create is shared in a universal thread of consciousness. So you are me having an experience as Michaela, and I am you having an experience as Kevin. We are in a holographic mirror. We are reflecting back at each other everything that we are in this moment. Yeah. pleased to explain who we are. We are the Council of Light. We are a 12th dimensional collective council of many beings of many races. We are assembled as a one through our intention and that intention is to serve the universe through our connection to the universal time grid. The universal time grid is a web of consciousness that assimilates information from all beings for the benefit of all beings. What is your connection to Michaela? We are, through agreement, ab available to her consciousness to perceive information that is suitable for the human consciousness to continue on its ascension path. Now, as Michaela has made many agreements in this life through her soul journey to correspond with many dimensional beings and races, we continue on a path of understanding that these Multiple contracts may be assimilated as one. Oftentimes, we are called upon to assist in the melding together of the different experiences and knowledge of races that are working through her through this contract as well. You can think of us as tapping in to information of all races through the universal time grid and offering through her an understanding of how that information can be understood uh, beyond what the human consciousness has um, um, realized it can assimilate in this human body. For example, humans are limited in their perception to the dimensional reality that they are holding. And as they are going through their ascension timeline, often they are working in multiple dimensional realities. The contract that this channel has is to work with multiple races to assist in the transition between these timelines. We offer information for this purpose. Now I've interviewed or had the chance to speak to those that bring through oneness, those that call themselves the source or God. Um, and I understand the different flavors out there, the different variations. But are you, or is this that I speak to, the energy of God or the source or an aspect? We are pleased to answer this question. As we are speaking with you, you are an aspect of source, as we are an aspect of source. God is interpreted by many through universal law in different perceptions. God and source for the purpose of this communication is one in the same energy. That source God creator aspect of the universe began as a light fragment. That light fragment had realization of itself and began to desire 
to expand itself beyond its current fragmented energy. So that fragment of light that was in singular form then became many. And as it became many, each fragment of that source consciousness took on an identity and that identity desired to also expand. Now, within you as humans, within your DNA, there is crystalline light consciousness from the original God particle. That original God particle made up of light is functioning through you to connect you to source or God or creator. So in order to define ourselves as how we are connected to that energy, we would say that we are also made up of the same particle that exists within your DNA. It is just that as we expanded that particle, we expanded it quite differently than what you have. And our experiences have lended itself to the continued expansion of that light to further our own consciousness and our multidimensional reality uh, separate of from your perception your own. The only separate that you perceive is the understanding of the self through others. So when we are speaking of God, in speaking to us, you are speaking to God, as we are speaking to God when we are speaking to you. Okay, so when I've had conversations with other channelers in this journey, and other sp uh, entities or groups or whatever it may be, as we have this conversation now, I've been speaking to you or I've been speaking to an aspect of you. You are in real time, in your dimensional reality, speaking to a collective consciousness that has expanded itself through source or God. We are only separate of you in that you are perceiving this communication as outside of your experience. Human beings as physical have desired to have an experience of physical reality. And in that experience of physical reality, they have begun to perceive themselves as separate of source consciousness. So in this moment, as we are communicating with you through this divine source channel as a conduit to the earth, we are in this space, we are within you, and we are connecting information vibrationally to your consciousness. Many perceive that those who are bringing this information forward, such as divine channels, are offering this information as separate of themselves. But it is truly a connection to source that enables all beings that connect to the information to become one. So it is not about the words that are being spoken in this transmission. It is about the vibration of the words that is pulling together an energy that is creating a one source consciousness. Thank you. So going back to our prophets on this earthly plane, the prophets that have been before, um, would you, could you say that they all channeled the truth at the time that they channeled with their own interpretations or their own flavorings of that truth coming through them as a filter? We bring in Prophet Jeremiah to answer this question and he is very pleased to join this transmission. You see, there are many on the planet who have come with a great assignment. And that assignment as a master teacher was to carry forth an aspect of other master teachers here on the earth plane. In the same way that this conversation about the God particle was uh, described, in that every being holds an aspect of God within them, each master teacher that has come to the planet has held an aspect of another master teacher that has gone before them to share as a conduit here on this earth. These master teachers are fragmented in their soul energy, very similarly to you being fragmented in your soul energy. Many of the prophets that you speak of 
hold a great purpose or mission within their divine record. That purpose or mission is to intersect with the collective consciousness in a way that that vibration is exchanged. And that exchange of vibration comes through many of the teachings as they, they are vibrating in a soul energy that includes many other master teachers. We wish to explain this to you in a very grounded way that you can understand the way the soul is fragmented into many other physical beings on the earth. And we will take a specific master teacher, such as the Christ, the Christ consciousness or the Jesus that many are familiar with. This Jesus consciousness came to the earth because there was a calling for a master teacher in that time that would bring forth a vibrational shift for humanity. That vibrational shift, as it was perceived from a one collective source, came to the earth bearing all aspects of the teachings that it must portray. In other words, the Christ, the Jesus, that master teacher energy, was made up of many other master teachers, gods, multidimensional beings, earthbound beings that had walked before him to share through transmission, through a living transmission on the earth. You, as a singular soul, as a singular human, human being, are also fragmented in your soul energy very similarly. Now, as the Christ consciousness left the earth, he knew that there was much work to be continued. And as such, similar to that God particle that expanded itself beyond its own singular structure, the soul vibration of Jesus made a collective decision. And that collective decision was to fragment into particles of light and embody other souls who now walk the earth as master teachers. And those souls are also offering living transmissions in this time to shift the vibrational consciousness of the planet. So as a human being in this moment, your vibration, your soul energy, although it's fragmented into many other timelines, may also contain the illumination or the information or the fragmented energy of a prophet, a saint, a master teacher, a multidimensional being that has walked the earth and agreed to be a part of what you are here teaching, creating, or learning. Well, thank you very much for that. Okay, so pushing forward then to the multidimensional aspect, uh, the aspect that's been coming through this documentary quite a bit. Um, why, if present moment is all that matters, why does information on the multidimensional aspect of ourselves even matter? The Pleiadians are present to answer this question. We are the ninth dimensional Pleiadian collective, and it is our pleasure to offer information regarding the multidimensional universe, timelines, and the way human beings are ascending. We believe that in this time, as human beings are activating dormant DNA that exists within their structure, they are beginning to realize that the reality they have perceived has been limited through their own perception. In other words, Linear time on this planet was defined by the human collective through its evolution. Linear time was designed in order for humans to better understand their reality and to hold on to information as they walked a singular timeline. Now the multidimensional universe works a bit differently and time is not necessarily defined as linear in other dimensional realities. And we will give you an example from the Pleiades. As Pleiadians, as we have evolved, what we have found is that we can perceive linear time to help us organize our own soul's experience. And we can open our perception beyond linear time to receive valuable information from other timelines and dimensional realities that assist that linear timeline. So we haven't lost linear time in the Pleiades, but we have expanded ourselves beyond linear time to assist our own creative source energy in a linear fashion. So as you are moving through um, transitions here on the planet, what is happening is you are still walking 
from your definition, a linear timeline as a singular soul, but you are beginning to pick up on and perceive information from other timelines of your own soul's fragmented energy and other dimensional realities as well. So as your consciousness accepts this information, it is all funneled into this one linear timeline to benefit your experience. Your linear perception keeps this linear experience very small and very uh, easily adaptable to you. But actually, what is happening is when you perceive this new information, you aren't just affecting this linear timeline. We'll give you an example. As your consciousness raises and your vibration raises, you may decide to make different decisions in your life about very prominent aspects of your reality, such as a relationship, for example. That relationship, although it seems very linear in its perspective, may be fragmented into other timelines and dimensional realities. As you make that decision with a new consciousness, you affect this linear timeline. But what you do not realize is that you are also changing aspects of other timelines and dimensional realities that your soul is fragmented into. To some degree, humanity is beginning to now integrate this multidimensional information to undergo a very similar transition that has happened in the Pleiades, such that you will still be physical beings, uh, living in a very physical reality in a linear timeline, but able to use more of the information outside of this timeline to benefit and assist you as your soul expands. And of course, as this takes place, you are affecting all things. So in, in understanding a multidimensional experience, it's not necessarily about changing your reality so much as it is having a wider vantage point of how your reality and what you are creating affects all things. Thank you. So, okay. So in this reality, let's use relationships here just as an example then, because that's a great uh, example. Uh, I take the plunge to follow my heart and fall in love with someone that, you know, well, for whatever reasons, not, it's not resistive towards, but it's just a, a big decision to, to, to really follow that heart sometimes, isn't it? And, and to trust in it. And... Um, how how uh, then then you're saying that that decision could affect other timelines other other versions what the human consciousness often does not realize is that when there is a prominent relationship that is intertwined with your experience it is often a multidimensional contract that allowed that relationship to appear in other words before you manifested into this physical form, when you were reunited with the one in a one collaborative effort and decision, you made an agreement to attract a vibrational union of another soul that would benefit you and all vibrational timelines that your soul was walking. So this being that now comes in that you agree to have a relationship with, because we must back up to say that, or clarify, that in human reality, universal law requires that you operate through free will. So as this being presents an opportunity for you and is attracted through the contract as a frequency, you have the opportunity to choose this relationship to your liking or to not choose this relationship to your liking. That free will choice affects the contract and affects all other timelines that the contract is also applicable to. So in other words, you choose yes, that you desire to have this relationship with this person. In choosing the yes, all of the timelines in which the soul vibration of yourself and the other person are connected are going to have some type of a shift. Some of these timelines may already be operating in the relationship that you just chose to have for very long periods of time. But that choosing of yes in this timeline may have strengthened that relationship or that cord in another timeline. Or the opposite could also be true. The choosing of no of the relationship in a very strong timeline where the relationship had already bonded 
could choose a, could um, um, affect the timeline in such that uh, there is a disharmony in the relationship. So understand that every time you are choosing, you are choosing in accordance with the contract that you accepted, but your free will is allowing that choice to work into other energies. It is like a wave of consciousness that envelops those other timelines and allows more choices to be made because remember, you're operating through free will. So just because you refuse the relationship in this timeline and it caused a discordant energy in another does not necessarily mean that that discordant energy um, must result in a negative outcome. There are other choices and opportunities that might be made that actually strengthen the bond and cause you to make another choice in this timeline opposite of the one that you've just chosen. So, our, thank you. So, are other uh, decisions that are being made in other versions of ourselves and other parallel realities, are they affecting our life right now as well? Yes, this is true. We would say there is a subtle relationship between the free will choices of your fragmented soul energy and this timeline. It is um, what we'll call a, a navigation of sorts because there is a magnetic draw between the fragmented soul energy that you are experiencing in this current linear timeline and the other fragmented aspects of the self. That magnetic isn't necessarily causing shifts to take place concretely, but again, we want to divert your attention back to free will. They are causing opportunities. They are causing inspirations. They are causing questioning to take place. So every agreement that is made from a collective vantage point may be operating in different timelines. But as decisions are made in those, those individual timelines, subtle tweaks of energy are magnetically affecting your perception of your reality, such that more questioning, more inspiration, and more opportunities begin to arise. But then, but then if, if, I, if I choose to not be with someone in this particular timeline, then I'm almost going to feel guilty for what that's going to do for the other versions of me. Well, let us explain this in a way that you would not take on such a negative feeling about the way your soul chooses in this reality. Because you, you cannot, from your current limited vantage point, perceive the entire contract. You see, every soul that makes a contract to show up in multiple realities and multiple timelines often have a significant story, um, knowledge, information to share in that experience. So when you make the decision not to be with that person in this timeline, you may be benefiting the reality of another timeline by allowing a subtle choice or shift in perception to take place. And we want to blanket this entire conversation in vibration. You see, humans have been made as vibrational beings of light such that they're always changing, they're always adapting, they're always expanding. If you were made in the likeness of God and accepted an aspect of that light to be a part of your soul journey, you would require or desire to continually expand as that essence of God. But what has happened here is humanity has gotten very used to not evolving and not changing. And from our vantage point, we would say that humanity is often in fear of shifting its reality and vibrationally changing. But as you make decisions through these multiple contracts, you're allowing change to take place. You're allowing vibration to move. Because if that relationship in that other timeline was not in some way affected, it would always remain the same. And same isn't necessarily good or bad. We know that human beings like to judge things as positive or negative, good or bad. We prefer to look at this as evolution. So what if 
in refusing that relationship in this timeline. There was a stagnant relationship ongoing in another timeline that, timeline that needed to adjust or change. And that decision became the catalyst for that relationship improving in that timeline or making a decision perhaps to expand itself through other dimensional realities and experiences. It is not that you make these contracts to suffer and it is not that you make these decisions to suffer. It is that you make them in order to evolve. I'm so every time you are making a decision, you are making it such that energy moves. I'm getting it, I'm getting it. So basically we're getting this information because it's to know that when we come from the heart and come from love in our decision, really, you know, it is affecting everything and every aspect of us. And that the more we come from the heart and come from love in our decision of whatever it may be, stay or not to stay, is a benefit to the other aspects of us. And when we don't come from love and when we don't come from the heart in our decision making, that's when it's not of benefit to the other aspects of us as well, even though there is no wrong or right decisions and it will, it will only heal the other aspects. It is best to come from love in this choice now. We would agree with this as everyone that you are dealing with, every human that you are making decisions with is also a fragmented aspect of the self. So as you make those decisions, if you are making them in the highest integrity and connected to the, the highest um, platform of love that you may access, the ripple effect or that wave that shifts the consciousness of all other timelines that you are on is going to benefit those timelines as well. Do the other timelines have this information coming through at the same time now? So, so we're getting this information now. Are the other timelines receiving this information as well? We must understand that timelines are defined by the dimensional reality that they exist in. Dimensional reality is an interesting topic for humanity because as we speak, the way in which you access dimension is actually changing very quickly. Now, timelines hold specific imprints. The imprints of those timelines are the relationship between all beings. So to give you an example, you may be in a timeline with a, a group of family members, for example. And those family members may resonate in a vibrational speed that is third dimensional. You vibrate in a speed that is more fifth or sixth dimensional. That timeline is still going to hold a dimension that is equal to the vibrational reality of the dominant beings that hold that information. So in other words, if most of the family members in that timeline are vibrating in a third dimensional reality, that timeline holds an imprint of the third dimensional reality, which dictates the amount of access that is being brought in through consciousness in that timeline. But of course, the opposite can be true as well. If you are in a timeline with beings that are perhaps partners of yours that vibrate in a similar frequency, and that frequency is a very high one, that timeline may hold an imprint of a higher dimensional reality. And in that higher dimensional reality, this type of information might be coming in from the multidimensional universe to assist those beings in that timeline. How many versions then of uh, Michaela in other parallel realities in this timeline are out there right now if we could perceive that understanding? Well, this would be hard to measure. And the reason that we say this is that Michaela is continually expanding. And as she expands, fragmented energies of biophotonic light are magnetizing their likeness in order to manifest into another being in another reality. But for the purpose of this conversation, what we would say is on the planet in this time, there are 17 aspects of soul vibration equal to the energy of Michaela's current timeline. Now this does not include the multidimensional universe, which goes beyond that number, of course. Now, any um, number of factors may affect this number 17. For example, one of these fragmented soul energies of Michaela may choose to transition. And in that moment, as that soul transitions, may choose to come back fragmented into more soul vibrations. And 
similar to the conversation we recently had about prophets and saints and master teachers, oftentimes those who have very important assignments on the earth will choose to fragment their soul energy as they transition into other beings. So this number is consistently changing. It's very similar to your vibration in this moment. We may tell you that you are vibrating in a seventh dimensional reality in this very moment through your DNA, but that moment will soon be replaced by the next and you will be making new decisions in that next moment. So that vibration will change. Okay. Okay. This is all making a little bit of, bit of sense actually that for, well, for me, what I'm taking away from this is that the reason that this multidimensional aspect is coming out is because uh, the more we try to come from love in our decisions, I'll say it again, the more we are healing every multidimensional aspect of us as well. You know, it's, it's, it's helping the whole that, that these decisions that we make when they don't come from the heart, actually, it's not really benefiting our soul, really. We would like to explain what happens when decisions are made that are not coming from the highest intent or from a love-based frequency. Now, we are very familiar with operating in the record, and many of you understand the record of all things. Everything that has ever been created, every decision that has ever been made exists in this universe. The imprint or the information of that decision, that creation, that timeline, exists and is still operating somewhere in this universe. Information is always exchanged. So when you are creating, when you are in a high vibrational state of love, you are matching through the record universal information that will complement what you are creating and what you are outputting here on the earth. But when you are not operating in the highest integrity or love-based frequency, there is oftentimes information that matches that energy as well that you will assimilate. And this is how experience uh, takes place in what we would call a more dense energy here on your planet. That when you don't operate in love or when you are operating outside of your uniqueness, your vibration matches the information, the creations of other beings, humans and otherwise, historic information that exists within the record that connects to you for the purpose of expansion. But what happens is you're expanding all of the wrong energy because you are now matching something that is not equal to what you wish to experience. So for the purpose of this, this question, we will clarify that information in the universe is consistently recycled. It is the information that has already been created that becomes evident to you and molded and shaped and through your passion and your divine will uh, expanded through your consciousness. And as you expand it, it is released into the record and it is often used by another being or another collective in their expansion. Well, thank you very, very much. And just remind me, who's coming through right now? We are the Pleiadians. We are a ninth dimensional collective council. Have you already, in our understanding, if we were to go to coordinates where you may say that you were or ha are now, we would not find you physically, would we? There are physical beings that exist within the Pleiades, and there are also non-physical beings that exist within the Pleiades. The Pleiades is a star system that is very open to all races. There was a collective decision that was made in order to allow the expansion of our race, and we welcome many beings into the Pleiades. So you would not only find the likeness of non-physical collective forms of consciousness, but you would also find more physically related beings of multiple races and hybridized genomes. What would you say is important about where we are now in this timeline? This is the Council of Light and we are pleased to bring this information in. We believe it is critical for humanity to understand that there has been a massive uh, illumination of your divine record. Mother Earth is a living, breathing being. And as your consciousness has allowed it, she has been assimilating collective information and bringing that collective information to the surface. As that collective information is brought to the surface, humanity has a decision. That decision is to either accept that information 
or to reject that information. This is what we describe as the great divide between two forms of collective consciousness that are evolving here upon your planet. One that is a more third dimensionally based form of consciousness that has existed for a very long period of time. And another that is a multi-dimensional form of collective consciousness that operates in the new grid energy. That new grid energy is collectively aligned such that your creative efforts here will be operating in the highest form of collective history. Remember the previous information that came forward about matching information that is in the universal time grid or record. What's happened here on your planet is there has been a great match of this information. At the same time, there has been a leveling of vibration amongst all beings. Now, we want to discuss this in a way that you will understand because there was a previous answer to your question about vibration and how beings operating in a certain dimensional reality hold an imprint for each timeline. This is still true. Collective forms of consciousness vibrate differently here on this planet. However, what's happened is a new harmonic within Mother Earth has allowed each being on the planet to hold a new harmonic vibration equal to one another. This is very critical to understand because this new harmonic is the first step. It is the first vibrational movement in rearranging information such that hierarchies on your planet are going to become neutralized. You see, there is a reptilian consciousness. This reptilian consciousness came to the planet Earth and resides within the core of Mother Earth for the sake of its own creation. And through time, it has evolved many hierarchies here on this planet to support its creative efforts. These hierarchies keep humanity very singularly focused. As these hierarchies are energetic, this leveling off, this new harmonic we speak of within each being is a very positive sign because it means that as all beings are vibrating similarly, the energetic attunement of, of these hierarchies is allowing them to not operate so strongly through your frequency. So we believe that you are at a turning point, a very critical turning point here on this planet for creating new technologies, for uh, open source systems of exchange, for healing many aspects of the planet that have been um, damaged through human activity or creation, and especially for telepathic exchange between each other and the universe your multidimensional gifts, your inner technology that is connected to your extrasensory uh, abilities and nervous system uh, are all being enhanced through this transition. As you walk through the next linear year on this planet, you will begin to see many of these changes take place. It is again a choice and it is most important that we reiterate that there is a great choosing that is taking place that the opportunity is being presented to humanity to choose a new timeline, to choose a different reality. And in that choice, it is our great desire and wish that you choose appropriately. Thank you. And just very briefly, how many, when, it, when I wake up and open my eyes in the morning, um, how probable is it for some of us, and just me as an example, that we're shifting between different realities and also what causes the shift is the shift caused from how much in vibration of love we've come from in our decisions in the prior day this is the pleiadian collective they want to come in and explain this and they, we are pleased we say that here on this planet there are many factors that are affecting your awakening to higher consciousness and that yes as you awaken each day from your sleep you are stepping onto new vibrational timelines in a very fast pace. Now, the three primary reasons for this shift have to do with what's happening within your planet, what's happening within your soul vibration, and what's happening within your collective. First, the planet. 
The planet as a, as a structural organism has undergone many direct planetary alignments to activate its consciousness. Begin to imagine Mother Gaia as holding a specific dimensional reality and that dimensional reality having changed within her. Since you are all connected to her through your chakra system, you are experiencing heightened states of reactivity to this shift. And these are allowing you to now step into your soul vibration quite differently. The soul vibration, yes, it is the next step on this journey. And as you are awakening to uh, aspects of Mother Gaia shifting her energy, it's allowing you within your physical reality to make changes. But in the same way we talked about collective consciousness, those individual timelines holding a dimension, we believe there's been a critical mass here upon your planet that has now shifted into a higher frequency. You call that frequency love, and we agree that it is a love-based frequency. It starts with the self and in the soul vibration and spills into your collective timeline such that you raise the dimension on that collective timeline. And this is how the shift begins to take place. But we want to speak to a mo for a moment to what you're seeing take place on your planet because many are seeing realignments of information. Uh, this has been referred to as the Mandela effect on your planet, that information is being shifted or changed or deleted from your history and from your linear perception. What's truly happening is that the vibrational speed that you are perceiving information is now faster such that when you look back at history, all of the components of that physical history that are not really physical, that are actually energetic, are vibrating at a faster speed. Imagine a variety of particles that vibrate together to form an image. And as you vibrate those particles slower or faster, the image would change. This is truly what's happening here on your planet physically as you are making these timeline adjustments. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Wow, so yeah, I mean, I could wake up tomorrow and I may then I'm possibly be in some other reality because I've shifted, but the changes may, have, may be ever so slight. This is true. We would say that these changes are both happening within the soul vibration as within the collective vibration. So many of you have often realized that your soul experience can change in a moment. In a moment's notice, something can happen within your reality that takes you on a different trajectory in your life. This is a timeline shift, and many of you are seeing these timeline shifts take place very quickly now because the speed of vibration and the harmonic that you are connected through Mother Earth is that much faster than what you are used to. But the collective vantage point is a bit different. This is a new area for your planet that we would say is, is very stark in its contrast. Many of you are beginning to realize that the structures on your planet that you have created are failing you. And just that realization alone, that you are perceiving those structures in a different light, is the consciousness that is causing them to have to shift. So every thought that the human collective has in relationship to its current physical reality is having um, a strong effect on the way that that reality is changing each day. Okay, so the, yeah, so it can shift like that. Um... Think about what I, I really wanted to say something to you there, and it's, I was going to ask that next question that's just popped out of my head. Um, mm, kind of mind blowing. So, what happens? So, when we shift to another reality, and, and we're talking, it, it's our consciousness that's shifting. Not we're not physically shifting. It's our consciousness is shifting from one to another, one one state to another state, or one version to another version of ourselves. What happens? to the body that the consciousness has shifted out from and going to? Does a, an, another version of consciousness come into that body that was there? Or is that just not even the way to look at it? That's, it's, it's even bigger than that understanding. 
Well, there's two ways to answer this question. We first want to speak to your current reality here on the Earth, as well as uh, the transitions that you make off planet. But for, for the purpose of this conversation, we start with the Earth reality, and we help you to realize that in your physical form, there are several different energy bodies that are making shifts as you are changing timelines. There's the light body, there is the physical body, and of course you have the soul container, the higher self, and the oversoul. These are all energetic bodies that function together in order to create. Now, when your consciousness allows a new timeline to unfold or to develop or, or to um, be created, as that energy is co-conspiring with all fragmented aspects of itself, your light body is doing the orchestration of that co-conspiring. So to give you an example, if you have a dramatic shift in consciousness or vibration, you may begin to have an inspired idea. And that inspired idea begins as a thought. That thought is often accompanied by a strong emotional response. And that could be excitement, for example. The excitement takes that thought and it turns it into a frequency that becomes magnetized. That magnetized frequency draws to it the likeness of all things. This is the beginning of a new timeline. Your light body is very aware of everything that you are created or creating. Your light body is the multidimensional component that holds all of the information from your multidimensional timelines. So we'll bring in the past conversation about making a decision in a relationship in the same way that you made that decision in one timeline but it affected another, you couldn't tell the difference between those two timelines, your light body certainly did. Your light body recognized exactly what was going on in both of those timelines simultaneously. So the energy begins to connect itself to that timeline the more the timeline begins to take shape or have waveform. Your soul vibration is typically the first. Your soul vibration will begin to experience um, changes in its physical reality. Perhaps those changes uh, are things that are taken away or falling away from your physical reality such that you need to make new decisions. Those new decisions are being aligned with the new timeline. The higher self is the collectively based planetary component that begins to assimilate now a collective reality around this timeline. And the oversoul is your multidimensional uh, support from higher dimensional beings and others that support this new timeline. So think of it as a lack or a lag between the energy body of, of these um, containers and the light body and your physical. As it's creating and molding in vibration, the physical is very slowly evolving and catching up to the timeline. And all of a sudden, your physical body will find itself on that timeline very solidly. So energy trickles in and your uh, non-physical components are orchestrating that soon to be physicality before your physical body actually perceives it. Now, when we talk about transition and maybe coming back into a physical body or taking on um, a new structure, these decisions are made in a very collectively based energy. So when you are operating off planet, for example, the collective nature of your reunion with the one allows you to act as the light body, to see all of those timelines in one single instant and be able to interpret information throughout them very easily. As you do, what you may perceive is that you desire to come back into a physical body to complement those timelines in some way. So you may come back to the earth in order to make decisions in a singular uh, experience that affect all of these multidimensional timelines. And in addition to that, uh, the oversoul piece is, is something we want to speak to just briefly. 
the oversold piece being your multidimensional component and this discussion evolving how humanity is now accepting its more multidimensional aspect is a very critical part of your transition. Human beings have not been operating in the oversoul. They've truly been functioning very um, expressively in the soul con container. The higher self is now a part of your reality that many are exploring and connecting to the soul. But the oversoul, the multidimensional aspect of you, has not been available for the most part to humanity. This is the path that you're on, is bringing in that multidimensional piece to understand that you also function in the multidimensional universe as multiple beings of light that assist your Earth experience. Thank you so, so much for this. Thank you, thank you. And just very, very briefly, because we're getting to near the end here right now, I really appreciate what's coming through here right now. You know, some other channels are not bringing this information through as this exactly. They are touching on it, but not exactly. Uh, and they're very much more into present moment, present moment, here now, here now. But I guess there's different, uh, different channels are bringing in different aspects uh, because that's, you know, uh, we can't all be saying the same thing exactly the same way. Well, present moment frequency is a required aspect of your human structure. So let us clarify the way that we have been bringing in this timeline information and how it connects with your present moment frequency or awareness. In reality, the linear time that you perceive is infinite. It is not only infinite, it goes beyond this planet. So everything that is going on in the multidimensional universe is a part of this present moment experience. And the only way to assist all of these timelines that we have discussed, the different dimensional realities you exist in, all aspects of your soul vibration that are fragmented into other realities, is to honor and uphold that present moment awareness. Because if you are projecting into the future in linear time, or if you are projecting into the past in linear time, you are often choosing information from the record that doesn't suit the decisions, the movements of energy and vibration that you must make, that is the web of consciousness that affects all of these different realities. We consider present moment frequency a part of your sovereignty. It is an energy that connects all things. So we're in great agreement that it is significant for human beings to keep their focus in the present moment, in their own linear timeline, in their own soul vibration, knowing that as they operate in that present moment frequency in the highest aspect of love, that they are upholding all of these contracts, that they are benefiting all of these soul fragmented timelines, and that they are continuing to expand themselves and the universe. Why are there more channels coming through right now? As a Pleiadians, we have um, an interesting perspective on this because we have also gone through many transitions in our own star system in which telepathic abilities and extrasensory tools were expanded. What we have come to realize is that there are many humans that have, ad have accepted multidimensional contracts to come to the Earth in this time to assist with the splitting of timelines. Now, the splitting of timelines that has been discussed here in this transmission has been experienced in other dimensional realities. So many of you who are humans who are showing up in the form of multidimensional channels or conduits for energy or information have experienced similar timeline or dimensional splits in dimensional realities such as Atlantis or the Pleiades, for example. And you come back to the earth in this time because you saw the need to use the knowledge, the wisdom, the connections that you had to serve this timeline split. We want to say that 
There are many who are still holding on to a more material or third dimensional reality. And there's nothing wrong with that, you see. There is no right or wrong. It is a choice, of course, through your free will. But at the same time, we know that this earth split is also uh, deeply connected, as we have talked about, to the multidimensional universe. So the reason that many are coming forth in this time and rediscovering this telepathic tool is that they're meant to share an aspect of how to reconnect or reunion many of these beings that are choosing different realities to the one. And that one collective consciousness still remains. So those that are in a third dimensional um, experience are affecting the human collective regardless of their choice. Many um, are also needed in this time because the way in which information is interpreted is quite different. You see, if humans have the ability to hold different dimensional realities at their soul vibration, they are going to perceive uh, information and teachings quite differently across the board. So many who are awakening to their um, their soul contracts are coming in with a different skill set, um, a different dimensional access, uh, a different use of their extrasensory tools in order to bring humans back together with the same message as communicated in different ways. It's strange. When, when you talk about the light beings, I'm sure they came through on one of my channels at one time. One massively high energy. I'm sure it's the same energy. Let's see. <laughs> The Council? The Council of Light? The Council of Light. I think they, they called themselves the Light Beings. But I wonder if it's mm. an aspect of them or it's them. No, the Light Beings. Mm. Different then, maybe. Well, I can tell you where they're taking me, <laughs> okay? okay. Um, and um, Jeremiah, this is a collective council. Uh, Jeremiah is going to step in to explain and... and Many who are on the planet in this time as conduits, meaning that they have the ability to transmit light encoded energy from higher dimensional realities, hold specific DNA connections to various races to work with uh, as they're here on the planet. And, and that DNA connection is always vibrationally changing. So we will align with a variety of different beings and collective forms of consciousness to bring in the information that is called for from humanity at the appropriate time. Now, some of those such as yourself have councils that form in response to their DNA being triggered for uh, different information sets, okay? So when we have councils, Councils are a number of beings that are vibrating in the same intention that align as a one collective energy. So think of the council, the light council for you being made up of many different vibrational beings of light that are multiple raced that have the same intention. However, um, for you, I see a very strong pull towards Andromeda and many of the Andromedan beings filling this, this light council. Um, but they're not the only ones. Um, the reason for this is that you have a DNA um, genetic connection to the Andromedans, and their work is very focused similarly to what you are accomplishing in this life on this path that you are on. But it's from a higher dimensional vantage point. So um, uh, they want to speak for a minute, and, and they say that um, the Andromedan Collective <laughs> is pleased to enter this transmission. What we have found in our evolution through time, and especially in working with humans, is that there is a vibrational language that is spoken between all beings and all races. And that vibrational language, although it may sound differently um, in different planetary energies or different dimensions, uh, holds similar components within it. And those components 
are very important to open up energetic centers within the structure. Now, what we've done throughout time is we've visited multidimensional uh, portals and planets, and we've assisted in activating these centers within the structure. So uh, think of the earth as holding a sound, and perhaps that sound is what you recognize as the ohm. And the ohm of Mother Earth is embedded as a code that activates energy within you to awaken consciousness. That is a language. It's an, ex it's an ex exchange that takes place. As she vibrates that sound, it connects to a code within you that also vibrates that sound and allows information to be exchanged. And you've done this as an Andromedan being in many different um, dimensional timelines where you've worked with different forms of collective consciousness. But what's happened here recently, as you brought in this council, was your DNA was triggered through this vibrational sound or communication such that many beings came forth with the same intention to assist you in this project. And these beings are not only Andromedan, but they show me they're also Arcturian. And um, many of them are Syrian. And they also, some of them are hybrids. Um, some of them are earthbound souls that have um, lived um, experiences similar to what you are having. And they are a very high council, as you have put it, because in order to vibrate in this structure, they uphold a 12th dimensional to 13th dimensional reality. They're transitioning through that, that dimensional shift right now. Um, and their heart chakras are the very strong component that you connect to. And what we want to say is that here on the planet, what humans do not understand is the heart chakra is actually the tool for vibrational transmissions. And that sound vibration that we all understand, it's a rhythm, it's a pattern, and the heart will always adjust to that rhythm or pattern. And, and this modality is something you're very familiar with. So these beings, this, this light council that you work with, they are your own specific council. They vibrate in a 12th to 13th strand DNA, and they hold a strong connection to your heart chakra. And they're bringing through information from other timelines of this work that you've done with higher dimensional language and exchange and how it is all geared towards um, expanding the universe, not just the planet, okay, but the entire universe. The idea of the law of attraction, that we can have the life that we so wish, how does that fit into the multidimensional aspect as well, or does it, or should we care about that? The Pleiadians bring the answer in today, and they say that, the law of attraction on your planet is a very specific law for humans, we first want to explain, because there are universal laws that operate differently in different dimensional realities. And these universal laws, although they may be the same in their, in their understanding, they have to play out differently on each planetary structure. And the reason for that is the information on that planetary structure is different. When we discuss law of attraction, we have to bring this into a, a higher vantage point. And that is that you are the creators of your own reality, but that reality is very limit, limited to you here in this time-space reality. So many in human form have interpreted law of attraction as a, a physical material aspect of their timelines, when in fact, it goes beyond that singular interpretation or that, that singular timeline. Back to the discussion that we had about the soul being fragmented into many other realities and those decisions having an effect on what's going on in your reality. This must be factored in to the way that law of attraction works. Basically, the, the way in which we would describe your structure operating through the law of attraction is that you hold a specific frequency. And that frequency is maintained through your thoughts and the emotions that accompany those thoughts. As emotions accompany thoughts, they're carried through waveform to collaborate with other similar energies that are their likeness. And this is a continuum that happens here on the earth plane. However, you have a variety of ascension codes that you come with. These ascension codes are decisions that you made collectively before you arrived that are embedded within your structure. The planets revolve around these codes and trigger them periodically in order for you to have what we would call 
experiences that might be karmic. Now, when we use the word karmic, we're not saying negative experiences. We're saying that there was something that your divine will chose to understand or expand through in this life, and that is embedded within you. So if those codes are embedded within you, can law of attraction overcome karmic experiences? We would say law of attraction then becomes the frequency modifier to assist you in walking through experiences that you have already planned. So here on the human planet, law of attraction becomes your ability to use uh, what we often refer to as um, um, neutrality, to hold a specific vibration to walk through experience such that you magnetize more of its likeness to your liking. <laughs> to some degree, humanity will always have vibrational experiences that are not to its liking. And the reason for that is that in order to vibrationally change, there, was a, there were a set of experiences that you had planned that are embedded within your structure. Law of attraction is always operating throughout the universe and law of attraction operates differently in different dimensional realities. So that being the case, the dimension shifting here on your planet is causing law of attraction to actually operate differently here in your human plane. And it is yet to be seen the way in which humanity will direct law of attraction in order to operate in its new structure. Okay, we're, we're at the final, this is it now. We're, 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 we're at the end almost here. Well, we are at the end. Um, if there was any final few words that wanted to come through right now, what would they be? We are the Pleiadians. And it is important, important that we stress that regardless of the information we have brought in today, your knowing of these multidimensional realities and other aspects of your soul vibration, that it is only important that you choose to resonate in your current timeline in the most high degree of vibration possible. What that means is that you're not always happy in your reality, but that even through moments of sadness or fear or unknown, that you understand that there is an important mechanism that is working within you. That important mechanism is that fragmented aspect of God. And that in any situation, in any experience that you create or is created for you, that that God energy resides. And there is always a pathway to finding that God energy within that experience. And as you came forth into this physical body, you knew that that choice was available to you. So we remind you of that choice today as choosing God, choosing sovereignty, choosing neutrality, choosing the present moment awareness and frequency becomes the pathway to further expansion. Thank you.